Greetings programs. This is Wretch and welcome back to Appointment with Fear. Well this is it guys, this is the last hero we're going to roll. The Cure couldn't do it and Judge Freedom couldn't do it. Now it's time for one more purveyor of good to try and stop the fear meeting before it's too late. So we're going to go ahead and roll them up real quick. And then get to it and see if we can actually find this out. Now, we can either do, we can either fire energy blasts from our hands or move objects with my brain and read people's minds. Out of those two, I do like the concept of firing uh, energy blasts from my hands like Havoc, but I think we're going to gene gray it up and move objects with my brain and read people's minds. I figure that might be helpful for trying to find the fear meeting. Uh, yeah, that looks okay. Oh, that looks pretty sweet. Kind of looks like Elrond if he became a superhero. Oh, that's kind of, that's kind of a uh, Professor Xavier vibe. And Super Saiyan with purple hair. And I don't like the uh, emo haircut. No, well, I know which one I'm going for. I'm going with Elrond there. It looks awesome. Now, in terms of the color scheme, I think we're going to give him. I think we're going to give him a Doctor Fate look. I think that'd be pretty sweet. Yeah, looks good. The Lone Wind. That's kind of interesting. The Berber. Let's find a good name for this guy since he's our last. Uh, he's our last superhero. He is Titan City's last hope, at least in this series. <laughs> the apathetic fantastic. The obscure nerd. The precision tesseract. That's actually kind of appropriate, considering the fact he looks like an elf. Mega dreamy ensign sandwich. The eagle. The daemon. I like that. I think we're going to go with that. As the daemon, you keep the citizens of Titan City safe from the unending battle against crime. Once more into the breach, guys. And I'm going to try and skip everything that we've already experienced. I kind of forgot, but we'll just skim through a lot of this. Evildoers beware, it's morning and daemon is ready for action. And, let's see. Use your telekinetic power to place some bread in the toaster. Good stuff. And here comes the information about the fear meeting and the titanium cyborg who we have yet to fight. And a luck point, groovy. Now let's see what our uh, crime alerts are. Three villains' identities have been revealed. Sylvia Frost is the Ice Queen and Richard Storm is the Tormentor. Remember we dealt with the Tormentor before. And Marcus Bulletta is Dr. Macabre, villainous surgeon. He's been planning a jailbreak and is likely to rob a chemist immediately for supplies. Okay, there's the luck point. And we're late to work. So let's go ahead and leave for the office job. I'm startled by the BB in the crime watch. What's the next update? Uh, a recent visitor from Metroville, the Tiger Cat, has arrived in town. This extraordinary villainess is a fierce fighter, but can instantly disguise herself as a harmless tabby cat. Another luck point. Awesome. Here's the argument. The I won't ask you again. Mind your manners. There's the robbery with the alchemists. Hmm. Let's see. You know, I think we're going to go ahead and resolve the argument again. And the argument's rapidly escalating. They're arguing about the dog. I believe uh, Judge Freedom interjected on this one. Alright, now... We can check into... The, okay, we'll change into the costume and stop the argument. And... Oh, we can use our Psy powers. Okay, we'll go with that. See what happens. You establish line of sight with a man and woman in the center of the crowd and concentrate. Uh, um, 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 what was I talking about? 
As your powers take effect, their argument dwindles and ceases. Nice, two hero points. Well done. Goodness, such a crowd. Come on, Brucie, I'll get you a nice chew toy. The woman walks off with her dog. Much mind powers. The man looks towards you and freezes. Keeping your psi powers focused on him for as long as you are able, you realize this man is not as he appears. Oh, can't let him find out. His thoughts go to the gold watch on his wrist, but then he fights to keep the watch out of his mind. He briefly focuses on a pawnbroker's next to a diner. Could he be a pawnbroker? You will never know, for in the next instant he breaks line of sight and disappears into the crowd. You spring forward to try and relocate him, but it is no use. This could be important information. I better remember it. A man with a gold watch is trying hard not to think about a pawnbroker next to a diner. Weren't we in a diner in that room with the, uh... Or, not in the room, but when the president was got, got shot when we were the cure? That might be interesting to see. The crowd has long since lost interest in its argument, and 50 wide-eyed faces are staring at you. Good day, citizens. You decide to leave after changing from Damon, you... Hmm. Well... Let's head into Abedin Park, since it's giving me the option. You arrive in the park to find a crowd dispersing and an ambulance pulling away. The police are getting back into their cars and driving off. A single car remains with one police officer standing by the scene. A barrier marks out an area where the incident, whatever it was, must have taken place. A deep red stain marks the footpath behind the barrier. What appears to have happened, officer? He appears disinterested in your inquiries, but eventually turns to you, squeezing one word from his tight lips. Mugging. By the way, that, that fedora and glasses looks quite stylish on Damon. Um, Let's leave him to invest- okay, we can change into the costume and persuade him to tell him more, or leave him to investigate the surrounding bushes, or let the authorities handle it. Let's check the bushes. An unmarked police car screeches to a halt by the barrier and two detectives climb out. Meanwhile, you hunt through the bushes around the area. We'll do a skill test. Ooh, we fail. We find nothing in the bushes. Nothing else of the, in the area seems to be of relevance either. I'd best leave this to the police. You change back into your street clothes and leave the park. Well, the crime watch is beeping now. Parker Airport. Hurriedly, you change into the daemon and speed towards the outskirts of the zoo. Here's another one. Peter Laboratories. Hmm. Well, I know the airport... I believe the Tormentor is attacking the airport. That's... That's gonna be bad, so we're gonna go ahead and head to the airport. And we'll speed through this, because we know the Tormentor is hijacked a plane. Oh, we can use our psi powers. And concentrate hard. A dreamlike vision shows the scene in the aircraft's cockpit. On the plane. The tormentor, shaggy-haired and cackling with a demonic laugh, has control of the plane. The pilot and co-pilot are bound hand and foot against one wall of the cockpit. The passengers are panicking and their screams only delight the madman. But what can you do from the ground, Damon? Let's see, we can communicate telepathically with one of the passengers, someone who may be strong enough to grapple with the villain or try to convince him to stop doing what's he, what he's doing. Huh. I really don't want to have someone else attack him. Because he's a supervillain, I'm not gonna have some, you know, uh, average Joe try and grapple him. I'm gonna try and just convince him to stop what he's doing, because that worked before. There's only one thing you can do from the ground. And now we'll do the uh, conversation with Tormentor. And I think we're doing the still skill check. Okay, we succeed. Groovy. He gives up his mad scheme, gives up his life of crime. Cool. And we'll check the crime watch. Nothing in the crime watch, so we'll go ahead and crash out. No combat, but we got some hero points today, so that's good. Let's hope we actually get to keep them this time. Alright, we set off for work early. We decide to travel on the subway. Find the one site that's free. Now we have the pit pocket. 
and Crime Watch beeps. Rad Square. See, I remember, I remember one of our guys stopped the pit pocket. I think. So we're gonna try and apprehend the pickpocket. I don't think this guy's very comp or uh, physically imposing, though. You rush up to a puny-looking, bespectacled man who's shaking with fright. He points to the man running up through the next carriage, and we'll chase after him. And we'll test their skill. I hope we can outrun him. Ooh, we got him. Groovy. You gain ground and catch up with the pickpocket. You catch hold of his jacket as he runs out the door, and he grabs a knife. He has six stam. Let's look at his battle. Telepath <laughs> telepathic blast to the occipital lobe and manifest a seemingly real lamppost. Let's go with that. See if we can hit him in one blow. I taste purple from the focus. Ah, your head was too fast for me. He's trying to stab me. And he missed. Let's create an imaginary boulder. To the left nostril, but we taste purple again. I guess that's a theme. And he misses with his stab, fortunately. Ooh, we can manifest a ghostly log cabin. That seems effective, doesn't it? Toward the right arm. Ooh, got him. So that's six. And we got a fear card, which is awesome. And we have four luck points. Yeah, let's go ahead and use our fear points. Ripper Shark, which I believe we have have before. With your final blow, the pickpocket collapses to the carriage floor. Commuters on the train spontaneously applaud. You stopped him! Thank you, sir. Huh, <laughs> thank you, sir. You're almost as good as the daemon. Huh, if only he knew that he was standing right in front of him. You go through the man's pockets to retrieve the wallet. What's, he's, what strange things he's carrying with him. Along with the wallet, you find a gum packet which contains a crumpled piece of paper, a tape cassette, and a map. The door opens and a security guard approaches. What's going on here? Gum packet, cassette tape, or the map? We'll go with the cassette tape. You sit down next to a kid listening to a Walkman. Excuse me, son. May I borrow that for a moment? He happily lends it to you. If only all residents of Titan City could be so helpful. And it seems to be a recording of a telephone conversation between a man and a woman. Most of the recording is garbled. The last bit can be clearly heard. The conversation ends. Don't worry. Why not? Time's running out. The treasures are being collected and replaced by our agent, Mustafa Karim. We will, all have, we will have them all soon. And then? We will meet the day after tomorrow on board the yacht. Okay, bye. Mustafa Karim is said to be a suspicious agent on that cassette tape. Awesome. Interesting stuff, indeed. Mustafa Kareem sounds like a dubious character. You better be late, or, or, or you better be off to work. Can't be late again. The train stops at Grim Street Station and you get off to go to work. Okay, now this is where we uh, get the rest of the day off without pay. Yeah, here we go. And suspended for the day. Groovy. Um, hmm. We can go to Wisneyland or go downtown to do some shopping. Hmm. I don't. Sh I don't know. Let's go downtown and do some shopping. I don't. It's like none of my heroes would go to Wisneyland. You first stop at the bank to get some cash. Next stop is a pizza parlor for a bite to eat. Egg and beetroot, my favorite. Ugh. I guess that's good for his, you know, his brain power. You take a stool facing out across Banner Street and watch the shoppers passing as you eat your pizza. Oh hey, that's Drew Swain over there. Swain is a retired millionaire who made his fortune manufacturing the collection tins used by charities. He steps into a bakery and when he steps out, something strange happens. He takes a step forward and suddenly freezes, held like a statue in an off-balance pose. What's happened to Swain? A blue van draws up and obscures your view. When it drives off, he's gone. You saw it with your own eyes, but it happened so quickly that you are now a long way behind the kidnappers. Um, when you dash to the toilets in the back of the van, changing the costume... I'm not going to be able to follow him, I can almost guarantee that this guy pro Well, should we follow the van? Let's ask questions at the bakery. He's got his mind powers, you know. 
In costume, you rush into the bakery. Quick, what can you tell me about your last customer? However, it seems there was nothing unusual about him. He bought a loaf of whole wheat bread and two custard tarts. The staff don't know anything more about him. Let's... Ooh, let's attempt to read their minds. You scan the minds of the people in the shop. They're definitely telling the truth. No one knows anything about the kidnapping. However, while you are up there, the delivery boy comes up into the shop from downstairs. Hmm, there's something different about this delivery boy from everyone else. There's so many new options open now that we can read people's minds. He is thinking of an important meeting. Let's see. A street corner and a sign. 110th Street. And what's this? The final image makes you glare hard at the boy. The emblem of fear flashes up in his mind. Ooh! Awesome. But what has such a young what does what has such a youngster to do with fear? Okay, awesome. And we gained three hero points, so we're definitely doing better than we were. We gain a luck point. When he realizes what you are doing, he dashes out into the street. You rush after him, but he's very quick. Moments later, he has disappeared, leaving you to puzzle over his thoughts. If the millionaire is inside the runaway van, you cannot hope to catch it. That's okay. Um. Hmm. Let's search for other clues outside the shop. Outside, you find a single clue to the kidnapping. A metal slug with the letter M engraved into it. Does this mean anything to you? Uh, let's see if we can try and solve. Mustafa Kareem. Well, M. M is for Mustafa, so... Ah, not the correct clue. Let's try Marcus Belletta's Dr. Macabre. That has an M in it. Okay, doesn't look like it. Let's go back to the story. Let's resume. You change back into your street clothes, and hopefully I can get a bit of peace for the rest of the day. And there are plenty of shops. Virgin Records and Epiphanies, the famous jewelers. Uh, perhaps I could pick up a new record or maybe something nice for Aunt Florence. Let's see, latest albums. I don't think this guy looks like he pays attention to new music. Let's see if we can get ourselves Aunt Florence a nice piece of jewelry. You notice a familiar figure taking an unhealthy interest in the diamond rings. Porcelain Perry! See, I don't remember if I've done this or not. After betraying a mob boss, his teeth were filed down and had to be replaced with porcelain caps. Ugh. You duck into an alley and change into the daemon. Percy stands aside nervous or stands aside nervously as you step up to the window. You decide to have some fun. Well, 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 if it isn't porcelain Percy. Damon! I didn't do nothing, just window shopping. I heard you had something to do with the smash and grab at Delager's jewelers last week. No way, you can't prove nothing. I was visiting me mom. Perhaps maybe I should. Just hand you over to Big Ben and the Slicer. It would save the police some trouble. Porcelain Percy starts to sweat profusely. Ah, uh, have a heart, Damon. Just forget you saw me. I'll make it worth your while. How so? The poison is back. He's gonna poison everyone from the reservoir. I don't want me mom to get sick, Damon. I ain't that bad. You found a clue. Porcelain Perry mentioned that the poisoner may be up to no good at the Titan City Reservoir. Okay, groovy. Go on, scram, Percy, before I change my mind. You got it, Damon. You don't have to tell me twice. Percy runs off down the street. I wish I could have read his mind. Alright, let's check the crime watch. Zilch. Remain silent. Might be a good time to check over any clues we've found today. Alright, another day. You get home and enjoy a delicious meal. Phew! How exhausting. Being the daemon sure isn't easy. And we get our six stand points. I don't think we got hit yet, have we? You're relieved to finally get into bed. The next morning, you leave for work early. Perhaps I should leave this wretched crime watch behind. If I miss more work, there'll be no job to go back to. But your fears are unwarranted, and to your utter amazement, the crime watch is silent. Okay, so we've shown here early. We're going to impress the hell out of Jonah, because he's speechless. Alright, here's the news stories. Strange attack in Abedin Park. A woman has been seriously mauled by what she calls a monster. However, a specialist at the hospital thinks that the claw marks are an animal of some kind. And the second story is a man who had his chest crushed in the grounds of the Natural History Museum. 
There are no clues of who is responsible, as if whatever caused the man's death simply vanished. Both incidents are being investigated by the police. Perhaps it's time for Damon to do a little investigation of his own. You change into Damon and set off to make your inquiries. Um, Marnum and Whaley's Traveling Circus, Titan Zoo, or the Natural History Museum. Let's try the zoo. When you arrive at the zoo gates, you question the attendant, who is quite clearly dazzled by your heroic presence. Good day, citizen. Have there been any reports of animals escaping their cages recently? Gosh, hi. Uh, yes, I did hear something about an escape. Fill me in on the details. Um, I don't know much, sorry. You'll have to ask the director. I'll take you to him if you like. Lead the way, citizen. But as you turn to follow him, a familiar sound comes from your wrist. Museum of Egyptian Heritage. What courageous action do you take next, Damon? Uh, well... I ignored the rad square thing earlier, and it said hurry, and that girl got mauled. I'm gonna go ahead and follow the crime watch, I'm thinking. We can always come back to the zoo, I think. I'm hoping. Let's head to the museum. The Museum of Egyptian Heritage is in Midtown area. Everything seems perfectly normal when you enter and make for the head curator's office. Dr. Kabla is an elderly professor type with white hair and a thick white mustache that hangs over his mouth. He's surprised to see you. I was told to come here immediately. Is there a problem, Doctor? Uh, I don't think so, Damon. I'm pretty sure that everything is in order. I'll double check all the treasures, though, just to make sure nothing's disappeared, huh? What now, Damon? That why would the crime watch go off, though, if there's nothing wrong? Tell him to double check the treasures, or ask him to get someone to show you around. Hmm. Let's... Let's ask him let's ask him to get someone to show us around so we can see if there's anything out of place. Two doormen are outside the curator's room. Ah, Abdul Aziz and Mustafa Karim. Will one of you take our honored guest to a tour of the exhibits? They both stand to attention. Abdul, perhaps you would be so kind? What now, hero? Is that something we can solve for you? Oh, wait a minute! That uh Mustafa Karim was said to be a suspicious agent on that cassette tape. Good work. Two points. So there's something bad going on here. Now you remember, Mustafa Karim was the name mentioned on the cassette tape you listened to. He's tampering with the exhibit's treasures. At the mention of his name, your eyes fall on Mustafa Karim. He holds your gaze and breaks away nervously. You grab his shoulder. Excuse me, Mr. Karim. I think we need to have a little chat. To the great surprise of the curator, Karim breaks free. He rushes off downstairs into the vaults of the museum. For two hero points... You quickly chase after him down into the darkness of the vaults. You catch up with Kareem in the dimly lit room in which several wooden crates stand. There's nowhere to run now, Kareem. But as you advance, a wicked smile spreads across his lips. His skin begins to wither. His eyes become sunken pits in their sockets. Oh, he's a mummy! He stands before you as a mummy and raises his arms as he comes towards you to attack. What now, Damon? Um, I'll s stand my ground. The sight of the transformation shocks you. The mummy advances. I've never seen anything like this before. What should I do? Um, what courageous action do you take next, Damon? Well, let's rush into attack. Take this, you gauze-wrapped ghoul. I must, that must be a quip. You land a fair blow on the creature. But rather than being knocked back, the mummy's chest collapses under the blow and then reforms. My punch! It's done nothing! Staring in disbelief, you are off guard as the creature fastens its hands around your neck. Your struggles are futile as his hands tighten their grip. <gasps> Is this going to kill me? Oh my god, he killed me! Oh no! <laughs> this is the end of the daemon. Fear cannot be stopped. I was choked by a mummy. With no one left to save them, Titan City is doomed. Wow! Two quips quipped, one villain defeated, two crime watch alerts, nine slices of pizza eaten, one fear card found, six crime watch beeps, more than 15 hero points for a bonus fear card. With, at least I got 13 fear po or, uh, hero points this time. Wow. That was impressive, guys. Holy crap. Damon didn't even get to the fear meeting. 
Oh, well, all right. I said three strikes and we're out, and we are out. So that was Appointment with Fear, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I, man, I just, it was, could not win for trying. But here are the credits. I'm going to go ahead and let them roll for a little bit while I go ahead and do my outro here. Um, a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be, you know, the two shown adventure books were kind of simple and this not. There's a lot of different ways that you can go. And while you can be a hero, um, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to win the game. You can be like a ton, you can have a ton of hero points, but it ain't going to be worth anything if you don't find out where the fear meeting was. But I hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you liked the video, go ahead and click like down below. Subscribe to the channel and leave a comment. That'd be a big help. And we'll catch you in the next series. Later days, everyone.